Hello everyone, it's Judy and welcome to Smartwatch series. So last week, Apple in the normal tradition announced the successor to last year's Series 9. Surprisingly, there is no successor to the Ultra 2. Instead, what we have is a new color of the Ultra 2, which comes in satin black. Like the Series 9, the new Apple Watch Series 10 also comes in two sizes. However, for the first time, we now have a 42 and 46 mm sizes. These new sizes, while still very compact, both slightly bigger displays than the 41 and 45 mm units of the series 9. In this video, I will be comparing the differences between the 42 and 46 mm units of the series 10 so you know the differences and also to help you decide which is the right size for you. But before that, let's take a quick look at what is new in the series 10. Is it a worthy upgrade? So guys, the first difference between the Series 10 and its predecessor is that while the Series 9 was available in aluminum and stainless steel, the Series 10 comes in aluminum and titanium buttes. And for the first time since the Series 7, Apple has redesigned the Series 10. The frame of the jet black aluminum model as well as the titanium model and now well polished resulting in a glossy and sophisticated appearance. Moreover, the screen now extends greatly to the edges increasing the screen to body ratio and by extension the display size. Additionally, while the Series 9 has a ceramic and sapphire crystal back, the Series 10 has a metal back that houses a big charging coil which increases charging speed. Even more is that the Series 10 is 1mm slimmer than its predecessor. As a result of the bigger case size and higher screen to body ratio, the Series 10 boasts a slightly bigger display than the Series 9. Moreover, the Series 10 comes with a more efficient LTPO3 OLED display that is still 2K bright as its predecessor, but then it is now 40% brighter when viewed from an angle. The LTPO3 display also allows for a faster refresh rate in all weather mode, enabling a live ticking seconds hand on select watch faces, including the newly released flux and reflection watch faces. The Series 10 also has a new chip. Apple claims the new chip is custom designed for performance, power efficiency, and intelligence. Moving on guys, the Series 10 also welcomes a temperature and depth sensor. These sensors were previously reserved for the Ultra 2. However, even with the sensors, the Series 10 is not recommended for deep diving. The depth sensor only supports up to 6 meter depth. As a result, this makes the Series 10 only ideal for snorkeling and other shallow water activities. There is also an Oceanic Plus app for snorkeling activities on the App Store. Furthermore guys, the Series 10 has an improved speaker design. This allows for music and podcasts to be played directly from the watch speaker. It is the first app watch Watch to support music playback via the watch speaker. Though to get the best listening experience, I always recommend using a headphone. Last but not the least, the Series 10 will charge faster thanks to the large charging coil at the back of the watch. Apple claims the Series 10 can charge up to 80% in 30 minutes, which represents 33% faster than the Series 9. Beyond these additions, the Series 10 also launches with Watch OS 11, which is the latest operating system for Apple Watches and it comes with new additions like sleep apnea, a new Tidal and vital apps. Watch OS 11 also brings offline maps and custom rules to Series 10. Moreover, there is a new safety feature that lets you inform your loved ones before starting an outdoor workout. Furthermore, with Watch OS 11, you can now adjust the activity ring as you wish and there is an automatic offline language translation. Interestingly, Watch OS 11 is available for Apple Watch Ultra 1 and 2, Series 9 down to Series 6. Although the sleep apnea feature is only reserved for the Series 9 and 10 and Ultra 2. So guys, 
Now that you know what is new in the Series 10, let's take a look at the differences between the 42 and 46 mm units. These two sizes have the same features. The only difference here is the size and of course, prices. The aim of different sizes is acknowledging we'll all have different resizes, which of course gives you the option to choose your preferred size. The first obvious difference between the 42 and 46 mm units is that while the 42 mm units has a 1.77 inches display, the 46 mm unit has a 1.97 inches display that lets you see a little more at a glance. Meanwhile, the 42 mm unit being smaller is more compact, though the 46 mm unit is still very compact. This remaker claims his wife, who has a 5.2 inches wrist, wore the 46 mm unit and it looked nice on her. As a result of the bigger display size, the 46 mm unit is prized. $30 higher. It starts at $399 and $429 for the 42 and 46 mm units of the aluminum GPS model. Meanwhile, it is $499 and $529 for the cellular models of the 42 and 46 mm units, respectively. On the other hand, the titanium model retails at $699 for the 42 mm unit and $749 for the 46 mm unit. As part of the available colors, the Series 10 aluminum model comes in silver, rose gold, and jet black colors. On the other end, the titanium model comes in slate, gold, and natural colors. And talking about the straps, the straps comes in three different materials, which include rubber, textile, and stainless steel. So guys, which size is right for you? I read on Reddit where someone claimed he isn't happy with a size increase because it thinks it is too bulky. The truth is that even the 46 mm unit is still a very compact watch. Moreover, if you want something smaller, you can always go with a 42 mm unit. In fact, looking at the Series 9 and 10, it is almost difficult to tell the difference in size. So the new sizes are still very compact. To determine which size is best for you, you simply need to measure the circumference of your wrist using a tip. Generally, for wrist measuring 6 to 7 inches, a case of 38 to 42 mm is recommended. And for 7.5 to 8 inches wrist, a case diameter of 44 mm or larger is okay. What I like to do is simply measure the width of my wrist and then compare that with the case size of the watch. And guys, that is it for this video. If you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you've not subscribed, Smash that subscribe button. Until next time, goodbye.